Good afternoon. Uh, my name, as you can see behind me, is Chris Cowley. I'm an anesthesiologist. I have an active practice at Intermountain Medical Center, uh, where I am the chair of the Division of Cardiothoracic Anesthesia, and I've spent my professional career dealing with people that have cardiovascular disease. I've also served as the uh, president of the medical staff at LDS Hospital before we moved to Intermountain Medical Center, and I'm a past president of the Utah Medical Association. Today, what I want to talk to you about is to provide you uh, a little information and a brief update on the most recent research regarding the health effects of particulate air pollution. There are well over 2,000 articles in the scientific literature regarding the health effects of particulate air pollution that have been published within the last decade. The effects are now quite well understood. The health effects of particulate air pollution produce widespread changes throughout the body. I'm going to talk about the health effect that is the most devastating and it accounts for the most deaths due to air pollution. And that is the disease affecting the cardiovascular system. The disease produced by particulate air pollution in the cardiovascular system is the same that is produced by smoking cigarettes. So on a day like today, everyone along the Wasatch Front becomes a cigarette smoker. That includes unborn children in their mother's wombs, children out playing, adults, no one escapes. We know from extensive scientific investigation that particulate air pollution very rapidly causes a low-grade inflammation of all of the arteries in the body. And within minutes of exposure to polluted air, the small arteries of the body narrow. In addition the, uh, to the effects on the arteries of the body, the inflammatory response caused by breathing the particulate air pollution causes the body's clotting system to become overactive. The combination of all of these effects leads to the development of several conditions that affect the overall health and shorten the life of everyone who's forced to breathe. And I believe that only applies to those that are currently living. The inflammation of the arteries causes inflammation of the cells lining the inside of the arteries. This inflammation causes the lining cells to become impaired and uh, their function no longer is maintained. These cells normally form a barrier to the fats that circulate in the blood, uh, such as cholesterol. The impairment in their function allows fats to leave the circulating blood in an abnormal fashion and deposit in the wall of the artery under the lining cells. As these fatty deposits grow, they narrow the caliber of the artery, and eventually they begin to restrict blood flow to the body tissue that's being supplied by that artery. This disease process is what you know as atherosclerosis. Another effect that particulate air pollution has on our body is to increase our blood pressure. This occurs because the small arteries of the body very rapidly narrow in response to breathing in particulate air pollution. Because of this narrowing of the arteries, resistance to blood flow rises and blood pressure increases. This narrowing occurs because the muscle lining in the artery contracts in response to exposure to particulate air pollution. The narrowing occurs within minutes of breathing polluted air. It happens in everyone, children and adults. However, the increase in blood pressure can be very dramatic in those who already suffer from high blood pressure. I know this slide is uh, quite a busy slide. I just want to point out that particulate air pollution enters through the lungs and very rapidly affects the brain, resulting in the increase in blood pressure by activating the sympathetic nervous system. It affects the blood itself and increases the ability of blood to coagulate in an abnormal way. It affects every organ of the body as it's being delivered to every organ of the body by blood. These small particulate particles 
can cross the lung and get directly into the blood where it's delivered to every organ in the body. These effects all add up to increase in mortality, an increase in chronic illness, and these illnesses are things that we sometimes don't really associate with uh, air pollution. They're things like high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and atherosclerotic arterial disease and coronary artery disease. We know and have known for many years that particulates in air pollution cause an increase in heart attacks and strokes. Much of the research that was done early on on these effects was done right here along the Wasatch Front by local researchers, and it has been reconfirmed more recently in the last couple of years by looking at patient data from along the Wasatch Front. I hope you're able to see how the effects on the arterial system that I've just discussed can lead to increases in heart attacks and strokes. I think that most people have the idea that high blood pressure can cause a stroke, but if you stop to think why someone has high blood pressure that led to the stroke, most people associate cholesterol deposits in arteries with a heart attack. Did you ever stop to think why cholesterol was there in the first place? It isn't normal. The mortality rates for heart attack and stroke increase in a community within hours of exposure to particulate air pollution. And those effects last for up to 30 days after the exposure has been terminated or the air quality improves. Particulate air pollution uh, levels that are typically found along the Wasatch Front during our winter inversions, such as we have had for the last few days. And this graph uh, on the slide behind me is taken from the Department of Air Quality website. And it shows the hourly and 24-hour average particulate air pollution uh, over the last several days. Uh, the levels that we typically see in our wintertime inversions lead to a 10% increase in mortality in the community, 10%. Now, that may be a relatively small sounding number, but when you spread that over uh, more than a million people along the Wasatch Front, um, it becomes something that uh, has a little bit more of a human face on it. What that means is that between 1,000 and 2,000 people a year die prematurely along the Wasatch Front due to our poor air quality. And that was calculated using a formula from the American Heart Association that they published a little over a year ago. Most of this increased mortality is due to uh, heart attack and stroke. Particulate air pollution has remained relatively anonymous because we have become used to seeing our family members and friends die of heart attacks and strokes, and yet many of these deaths may be unnecessary and were triggered by our poor air quality. The effects of particulate pollution are not confined to those who are already ill or weak or frail. Air pollution impairs the ability of even the most fit to exercise. Those exercising in polluted air breathe more deeply and rapidly and thus are exposed to more pollutants. The inflammation caused by this exposure produces premature aging in everyone, even those that are fit and out exercising in this air. The inflammation and oxidative stress of particulate air pollution shortens the lifespan of everybody that is breathing this type of air. This is seen even in the most fit and healthy. And the health effect of air pollution, uh, as we have talked about previously, is the most devastating and the most vulnerable, the children and the elderly and frail. There's no safe level of particulate air pollution that you can breathe. The EPA has established a national ambient air quality standard for particulate matter, and it's at 35 micrograms per cubic meter of air. However, these standards are not protective enough. The national ambient air quality standard that we know 
and that we are living by does not protect human health and negative health impacts occur at levels even below the national ambient air quality standard. The EPA knows this and it knows it well. The EPA has been pressured by political forces and by business interests not to lower the national ambient air quality standard and we are all paying the price for that. The mortality curve for air pollution is not a straight line. It's a curve and the most steep portion of that curve is at the lowest levels of air pollution. That means that small reductions in the levels of pollution of our air can have a much greater impact on public health. And this is an example of that curve. You can see the steep portion is there and you can see at the bottom the exposure to particulate matter and also a reference there to cigarette smoking. So just as with cigarette smoking, the most health damage comes the first one or two cigarettes out of a pack. The most damage to your health comes at a relatively low level of particulate air pollution. Thank you.